first of all, uh, welcome everyone. So my name is Agnieszka. Uh, you can also call me Agnes. Um, and my presentation is going to be about working in the male dominated industries. And the picture for that is of course these cranes construction because my sort of path is that I'm a bio lady with education in, in biotechnology, chemical engineering, but I work actually with construction industry. So I used kind of, you know, what is my, uh, what I, I sort of uh, breathe every day as an example. Uh, but of course, you know, um, when it comes to male dominated industries, as you know, it's also about uh, bioeconomy, it's also about biotechnology and all the other kind of engineering disciplines. And I, I just wanted to share a couple of insights with you. So I'm going to try to very quickly give you my perspective on why some things I may be telling you, you may think like, oh, my experience is, is totally different. And then I basically try to sort of, you know, bring together, okay, what are the challenges for us women working in male dominated industries? What is causing these challenges? What should we do? Um, and then basically, you know, what, what lies ahead. And I'm going to conclude with a little call for action, because I think that the point is that, you know, it's not only about listening and talking and then doing nothing. We should also try and, and act on things. So basically, very quickly, my perspective and why this is important. So I'm, I'm Polish and I'm only telling you this because Poland is a post-communist country. And actually what occurs to me is that uh, while we're talking here, and I'm very often a part of a conversation around inequality that's driven by gender, I think that the Polish experience is rather that, you know, as, as we used to say, everyone is equal, unless there are people who are more equal, and it really doesn't matter what, what gender you are, it's basically dependent on whether you are the member of a communist party or not. So in a way, communism makes it, you know, makes you equal towards inequality. Um, I did study biotechnology, as I mentioned, and actually I realized that during my studies, I think 90% of students were females, but then I, I had a further think and I thought like, okay, but when I look at my teachers and professors, they were mostly male. So there's this sort of, you know, thing of leadership being mainly male and females being more in a, in a sort of mid-range positions. Uh, I come from ethnically uniform country, which sometimes provides interesting in, in, insights when it comes to you know, things uh, when we talk about inequalities in the context of, of uh, race. And also something that, that is probably sometimes setting me apart is that I think I have analytical brain that lives on facts and numbers. So that's enough about me, but that's sort of you know, trying to give you the perspective of like, okay, who is giving you the all this advice and, and talking to you. So just to, well, I, I don't think that we have to spend too much time on this because we all know the challenges of working in a male dominated world. What I try to do here is sort of put together what we recognize, but also how we are being seen. So hence, you will probably recognize that your work is scrutinized more, that you have to work harder, it takes you more time to get promoted. But they also probably quite often got into a situation where somebody told you, oh, you get so easily offended or, or you're so emotional or like, you know, or, you know, why don't you make that decision quicker? Uh, of course, there is there is the, the thing that we all know that there is boys club, but there do not seem to be many girls clubs. Uh, and one thing that that uh, basically also struck me when I was talking recently to a couple of, of my female colleagues was that I'm not really sure whether women in the setting, whether junior women can count on senior women if there are any that happen to be working in these male, male dominated industries, which might be the explanation why there aren't that many girls clubs. But of course, the question is like, why is it the case? Uh, and I think that basically what we often tend to forget is that we are different and we look at the world in a different way. And what I mean by we is people of different gender or, you know, chromosome composition. Um, someone may think like, okay, yeah, but, you know, should that be such an obstacle? Well, it is a challenge because our conditioning and our bringing up is obviously different. 
And it's not only about how we were brought up, it's also about this sort of years of tradition and of, of women being assigned specific roles, men being assigned specific roles. So you're not, you're talking basically about, you know, generations of, of being used to doing something in a specific way. Uh, but having said that, so of course the change is possible, but it will not happen overnight. But also change brings disruption. And this is where I'm trying to bring attention to like, we as women are focused on, we want to come and conquer these things that we maybe were not allowed to do. But that also of course brings the change to men who are used to doing it. And that will also change their landscape of like, oh, suddenly they have to get used to working with us. So it works both ways. So how do I behave, you know? And I think that this is probably type of a, a bit of advice that, that I'm trying to give maybe to more junior members of, of network, but it will, will be also, of course, nice to, you know, to then get the thoughts of more senior ones. I thought that if there is only one thing that I was to tell you, it would be think that you are here to deliver the best work that you can in the most professional way possible. Because I think that this is sort of, you know, this is the tunnel that, that I've been walking through for, I think, probably 15 years. Uh, and it is, yeah, it is a very, very good approach to, to be focused on being professional. Now, if, if you sort of unpack it, uh, I think it's very important to have clarity, clarity of thought, clarity of boundaries, clarity of doubt. Clarity of boundaries, because if you are interacting with men and they are used to different working practices, different working behaviors, you have to be clear about what your boundaries are. Are these jokes offending me or am I good with them? And et cetera, et cetera. Clarity of thought, which helps if you are in uncomfortable situations and you have to be basically reporting it or thinking like, okay, what do I do with it considering analyzing and clarity of doubt which is kind of a, a, a funny thing because i think my experience of working with many men is that don't try to pretend that you know just save everybody time by asking 